What's up, world? How y'all doing? It's your boy Boss Rider checking in again. Navigate Logistics. I'd like to thank everybody and welcome back to the channel. Uh, this is like the, uh, wrapping up the first week of March. Um, Saturday, March 9th, and I'm going to get ready to drop. A little short run I picked up, same day delivery um, over here in Ellery, South Carolina. So we're going to drop that off and then take it back to the house, get me off Sunday, try to relax a little bit and um, get two trailers, I mean two trailer tires to put on from my mechanic. Uh, but we started the, the month off pretty good. I didn't get back out there until Monday. Dropped in Dallas and came right back. Uh, pretty good rates, uh, close to three dollars on both. So they're pretty good. Um, just wanted to touch base with everybody. Uh, in the trucking industry, news that's going on. You've been hearing stuff about Conway. Uh, they got their platform back up I'm on a little back road in South Carolina. Got a car just following them. real close. But he can go around. Ain't nobody out here. Um, I ain't in no rush. I got plenty of time. So. But they got their platform back out. And uh, I really, I normally don't book stuff off their platform, but I'm familiar with it. But you got stuff uh some news that's out they've been owed some money from ikea like 500 something thousand and with that news getting put out there it gave us the opportunity to have a glimpse into some of the broker margins and um it's looking like off that ikea contract they were capping like three dollars per load three dollars a mile per load off that ikea contract on the broker side now how much the carriers were making off those loads i don't know and i'm interested in finding out if anybody has ran any conway brokered loads from ikea please feel free to jump in the comment section and let me know if you got three dollars close to it or over who knows but that's what a lot of us on operators we're trying to get to the bottom of and find out what's what's the percentage of these broker rate uh broker margins uh, you say on that national average it's like 28 percent i think it's i think it's more than that i think it's close to like 40 45 percent right now in 2024 you know what i'm saying um because you know the contracts have been being renegotiated ever since like uh november december of 2023 they should be wrapping up now since it's march uh, the shippers want to get their stuff shipped you know what i'm saying a lot of the contract rate contract freight contract carriers you hear, you still hear stuff about uh, driver shortage with them because they don't really have enough drivers to fulfill those contracts. That's why you got a lot of uh, loaded trailers at these facilities uh, and stuff like that. Um, it's really not a it's really not a driver shortage. You just got a lot of owner operators out there. That's why they say capacity is outweighing the demand right now. Um, capacity increased for the first time in almost two years. So for some reason we got carriers coming back in the industry when the load to truck ratio is still below uh, 1%. One, 1%. Uh, still below one load to every three trucks. It's below one load for every three trucks. And last week was the first week that we had a capacity gain. So how that's going to affect, um, I don't know if it's going to affect it positively uh, for those of us that's looking for 
the freight market to slightly increase and start to get better uh, as we creep up on the second quarter of 2024. But um, if you like me, man, you 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 know we out here. We just gonna try to truck it out. You know what I'm saying? Uh, do the best I can. You know, all glory to God. I'm still trucking. So you know. He's going to lead me. He's going to show me the way. Uh, uh, but back on to those broker margins, man. That's one thing that I really want them to come down on. You know, uh, the truck and the carriers are uh, responsible for getting the freight to and from on time in a safe manner. There's no way the broker should be making over 25% of the carrier, you know what I'm saying? Even if I was a broker, I, I don't think I could I could feel right, I would feel right taking, you know, 50% um, of the load, giving the truck driver 20%, you know, I just don't, I, I just don't feel like that's right. So that's one thing I hope FMCSA can um, really hammer down on. I know they tried to with a broker transparency they pushed that but from what i'm hearing i haven't really tested it myself and i should because I'm, I'm i have good relationships with uh about seven to eight brokers that i talk to on a weekly basis and uh now that i think about it i think i am going to i'm going to test that test the waters on that and uh because they tried to with the broker transparency uh, and what that is is you can request to see how much the broker is, how much the shipper is paying on that load, and how much the broker is taking. You can you can request to see that. Now I've been hearing if you do that, then it, you kind of get blackballed with that broker. They won't work with you. You know what I'm saying? It's because they can work with you at their discretion. So you know, be careful, be cautious what you do but that's one thing FMCSA at least tried to do with the broker transparency but I think they need to continue to push forward and try to put some regulations on how much they the percentage on how much they can be uh, tied into with the detention pay you know I think it should be a percentage of the total amount of the low how much you get paid after two hours per hour it's thirty dollars, fifty dollars an hour. You know, sometimes that don't cut it, man. You be there three, four hours. You know, time is money. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I'm, I'm at a place three hours, ninety dollars ain't enough for me to sit somewhere for three hours. You know what I'm saying? I know it's better than nothing, but that ain't enough for me to sit somewhere three hours. So. I really wish they would try to hammer down on this detention pay, broken transparency, so we can cut into the um, broken margins. Um, that New York City boycott, I'm not sure how, about how that went. Uh, I really haven't checked up on it. I don't go to New York anyway. Uh, I just thought it was interesting, you know, because if truckers stick together, we can't get some stuff accomplished. So I'm, I'm with all that. Truckers uniting and sticking together. Um, it don't take much, you know. I know that'd probably be a miracle to happen, but if we would sh shut down for a day or two, we can get some things, you know, pushed through. Uh, but that is a long shot. But, um, so that's a few things that's going on in the industry that I've been hearing with the FMCSA and stuff like that. Um, haven't heard much on the speed limiters. That kind of died down. Uh, so we'll see where we go with that. Um, hopefully these rates start turning around in the second quarter. We'll see how things go. Um, my February recap, I'll go ahead and slide that in there. We only came in a couple hundred dollars uh, shorter than what we did in January, so 
go back and watch the January recap. And uh, you can, I tell my total gross in there. So we're only a couple hundred dollars short. So this year is starting off pretty good as far as uh, this market that we're in. I can't complain. You know, I scaled my business to do about five, five to ten thousand dollars more. So, but in this freight, in this market, you know, it's just not feasible. I ain't taking too much time off. I'm going hard as I possibly can. So you just got to be grateful for what you can get. Um, but it's progress. Uh, these last two months have been better than the previous two months. So you just got to be happy with the progress. Um, the dedicated lane been running good for me. I didn't do it this previous week. I took a week off of it. And like I said, I ran in Dallas because I'm trying to uh, build some relationships with some brokers out that way because that's the lane that I really like. Uh, fuel is cheaper out that way. Flat truck does better with light loads um, so that's some things that I'm working on uh, trying to build some relationships as well as um, in, a, in the foreseeable future I'm be building and bringing people on uh, like I said hit me up on the website shoot me an email your resume uh, I'll put you through the hiring process send you the qualifications uh, Get you on a rental truck for six months and get you your own truck. Uh, owner operator pay. Uh, all I ask is 2,500 miles or more. And uh, be professional, safe, and be happy to have you. So, uh, like I said, got plans to expand. That's what I'm focused on. So, I'm trying to work on these lanes. Uh, building more relationships so I can have more direct freight uh, for the people that I bring on. So I don't have to dispatch everybody, but you know, every step of the way, it's been a uh, it's been a blessing to get to this point. So we just continue to build, uh, regardless of the circumstances. Uh, And that's pretty much about it, what I'm hearing. We did the recap of February. Uh, like I said, I made my announcements to expand and hire more drivers. Uh, uh, guys, can you leave me your comments as far as how you feel about those broker margins, what you think we can do, and stuff like that. I know the best thing to do is go directly to the shipper. And that's definitely something that I'm going to be doing. Um, it's just you're limited when you only have one truck. So you need to have three to five trucks to be able to go to the shipper and, and really negotiate. So that's what we're building towards. And hopefully we'll be at that point no later than the end of the year. Um, that's about it, man. I hope everybody's being safe out there. Staying positive. Um, um, don't forget to hit that like button. Join the tribe and subscribe. And share if you really care. Peace. It's your boy Boss Riley.